five, four, five, four, three, two, one, go. We are water. <laughs> Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex, and I am hosting episode 199C, the end of the uh, 199 uh, trilogy, as it were, here today. The, um, best, the best trilogy. That there is the voice of James. Yep. And on my far right, my brother Jamie. C. C. <clears throat> this is one of those special 199C kind of yeah. moods, you know? C. We are all about the C's today. So the the word of the day is C. You see? Hmm. We're revolutionary. Before we get too deep into the show, I'd like to thank the patrons for supporting on uh, Patreon. Um, yeah, ooh, yeah. We rely on you for your support, and it helps us. It helps the train along the tracks, if you know what I'm saying. Hopefully, there's not a scary tunnel coming up. Oh dear, there's a scary tunnel. No. <laughs> What's the scary tunnel? I just I don't really like um, when the train goes into the tunnel. I yeah. love the bit. I love that bit. A lot of people like that bit, but for me, that's a, the, the whole world's coming crashing down around me kind of feeling. No, it's like, it's the wind when you go through and it's like suddenly like, <gasps> oh, I love that feeling. But I don't go on trains. Trains are kind of lame. Trains are kind of lame from James. James doesn't like trains. From James the lane main. <laughs> we got some topics today. We've, we each actually have a topic. We've, we've, we've done it. Um, who do we, who do we want to start with? Maybe we should go in. Um, well, we can't go jar order because it's two J's and an A. So. Though, though we still can. J J A J J J J J J J What do you think? Ja. What, do, what do you think? What are you feeling? J ja. Where should we begin? Ja, 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 I think ja. we should start with my 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 one because there there isn't much substance to it. Um, if there's any substance to any of ours, though, let's be well. Okay, put yourself down then. No, I'm not. I'm being the, funny. the generation of Zoomers are putting themselves down constantly. Oh, did you just say Zoomers? Huh? What define a Zoomer for me? Because I don't fucking know. <laughs> there's wow. so many now. I there's Zoomer. We were generation G. There's Zoomer. Yeah, generation C. There's oh. Boomer, Zoomer, Coomer, Doomer. Which is a new one. I I learned. Doomer. Yeah. Doomer. What's a Doomer? Um, I think that's Doom and Gloomer. Yeah. Like, so is that what we the are? Wick and, um, Wick and Morty fan is it? Is would be a Doomer. Right. Right, that's definitely me then. What what what's like a nineties kid then? Because that's probably what I am. A generation X X. No, because that's isn't that people born from two thousand onwards? No, that's no, a millennial. No, isn't that a Zoomer? Yeah, that's a Zoomer. Generation Z. No, a millennial because they were born in the new millennium. No, but they're also called Zoomers. Yeah, for some reason. I've, well, I'm I lost. guess we're all Zoomers then. I'm not a Zoomer. Like, no, the 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 like thing the the slot our formative years were the two thousands really, yeah no, the early two no, thousands. I I while I might be in the age to be a zoomer, I'm I grew up with things from the earlier generation. That's not true. That's I would lie. say we're in the middle. We're in the middle of being nineties and zoomers. I suppose. But anyway, none of that is relevant I just, because my topic is this. I learned of something that I was doubtful of. Still am, if I'm being honest. And I honestly need your guys' help, and I need the Jarlings um, who are absorbing this very, you know, voice into their ears right now. I need their confirmation or something. So apparently, testicles have taste buds. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I've heard this as well. Ray. You've heard this. Yeah. Um, so uh, the idea is apparently you can taste things through your balls. Mm. Somehow, for whatever reason, I don't know what biological uh, explanation is is behind that one. Um, supposedly, you can taste with your balls. Have you ever heard about this, James? This is completely new news to me, and I'm 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 in shock. How do you what know the about fuck? it? Jim? How do you know about this? Um. Well, the first thing I saw was a TikTok of this dude saying apparently you can taste through your balls. So I've got um. Like a jug of warm water full of sugar. Right. So it'd be really sweet. And then it just cuts to him after he's done it. And he's like, holy shit, it works. Really? It just ends. Right, yeah. Because um, I, I I was told about it. And I was like, no fucking way. 
Mm-hmm. So no, how could we have lived for so long and not been like, how would it not be like on Pornhub and shit, like ball tasting tournaments and all sorts <laughs> of stuff like that? Like how yeah. would that not, how would we not know about it? Like if humans collectively are good at finding information on anything, it's stuff that our genitals are capable of. Right. Sounding, 100%. you know, putting things in your urethra. How, how else should people, would there be a video of a man sticking his own penis in his bum? That's, that's exactly, we, yeah. The human. We, we've, as a society, as a, a race, we've done it all. So you're telling me we've only just discovered you can taste with your balls? Are you <laughs> free joking? So of course, I put it to the test. I put it to the test. Like you said, the sugar water. That's exactly what I did. I got a glass of warm water, put some sugar in it, <laughs> went into the bathroom, just stuffed my balls into the cup. And that, and I, I waited there for a while, and I was like, <laughs> right, <laughs> what is happening right now? Because is this a placebo thing? Is this like some grand scheme? This like yeah. s- this like a fake article that's being spread by people and it's just being memed to the point where everyone's just joking about it and I've just made a fool of myself, just stuffing my balls in a glass full of warm, <laughs> sugary water. I, it was it didn't strike me, but I, I I was very trepidatious about it. And it, but but in the back of my mind, I was like, is that is something happening right now? Like I wasn't sure like. Am I going to taste it in my mouth, or am I actually yeah, going to yeah. taste it with my balls? <laughs> That's the thing I don't understand, because, like, what what can that possibly feel like? You know, like, flavour, like, yeah. in our head is, like, in the mouth. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it's, but, stuff. The tongue has taste buds on it, and, that, and it all starts from the tongue. Yeah. So surely, if your your balls have taste buds, you'd feel it Yeah, surely you'd balls. feel the, it from the nuts. So how, how would you, you know when your balls are in sugar, that it's tasting sugar. How would you know that feeling in your balls? Because, oh yeah, it's a difficult thing to even... Is this why that, um, I can't remember what the brand is called, but that shower gel that's like mint. And you can't, you're not supposed to use your testicles on it or something. Well, when you do... I know the one you mean. When you do, your, your balls feel like freezing. Like it's the same feeling as brushing your teeth. Is that what Dude, you're right. When, when like something really minty or like deep heat or something gets on your nuts, it's like... What's that thing you're supposed to not put on your testicles because it's really painful and like really hot? Deep heat. Yeah, that would be deep yeah, heat. Yeah, that's... The like muscle ache yeah. cream or whatever. Or no, toothpaste. Toothpaste is another one you don't put on your testicles. That's really... I hadn't thought about that because mint is an extremely strong yeah, flavour. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, have, you get that cool, like cold feeling. Yeah. Just like when you've brushed your teeth yeah. or eaten a Dude. after eight. So did... Did you taste sugary water through well, your testicles? I th- I I thought How much I sugar could. did you use first of all. Um, it was only a small glass, about the size of one of these, you know, mugs. Mm. Um, but and I used one heaped teaspoon, so maybe I didn't use enough. Yeah, I reckon you should have used more. Yeah, you want it to be really sugary. You should have tasted it first. You should have tasted it first, so you know the taste. No, I did taste it, and then I was like, oh shit, now. Like that sugary taste is in my mouth, so I don't know if like that's going to conflict with my mm. balls now, or like how does this work? <laughs> this is a new world we're entering right now. Um, but yeah, what, the reason I'm bringing it up is because you know lots of people listen to the cast. I, I want people to you know give it a, a try themselves in a safe you know environment. Um, report back and let us know if it's BS or not, or okay, if it's just okay. a placebo. Um, the internet. So what yeah. you're saying me to do is I'm going to go home, get the peanut butter jar out of my fridge and dunk my testicles no, in it. No, I, I reckon just taste. a bit of warm water, not too hot, not too cold. You don't want to freak your nuts out. Put a bit of sugar in there, mix it away. But but if everyone's doing the sugar toast, we're only confirming the sugar works. We need more. Well, we any any brave jarlings stuff. out there that wants to venture down this rabbit hole, they are welcome and they can report back and we'll talk about it. But for now, we just need to figure out if there is any any truth to this because I don't know if this is true like every fact I've ever known might as well just be lies okay no we need to go back to the drawing board on this one when you have a bath and use like a bubble like a you know a bath I don't Mm. know the word surely that there's a flavour to that well that's what I mean like like, lavender or something say you just went on like a really sweaty run and your nuts were like really it was like swamp crotch Mm. would you not be like tasting the swamp crotch constantly or is it a different type? This is what I mean. Like, is no, but it- you you feel it in your balls. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you do. As a as a gentleman, you do have a unique bond slash connection with your nuts. Like they are, 
they're almost like a separate organism from you and you care for them with such a you know delicate degree like they're little baby odors hanging down there you gotta like yeah. cradle them you gotta keep them clean you know I, i'm gonna say i think this is uh bullshit because bullshit <laughs> it's not i'm pretty sure it's it's factually true but whenever i've had a, like a bath like when i was younger i <clears throat> you you all use that stuff i don't ever remember like a lavender taste because I was in my well, bath. It, it, yeah, it, how it's... come when you use soap on your balls, it's not like... Because it might not... They might have taste buds, but they might be, like, slightly different. They might be also, evolved to... They might be, soap. like, uh, like say, if the taste buds in our mouth are 100%, like, strength, they could mm. only be, like, 20% or something, man. I don't know. Because, like, what would the purpose be? There's a, there's a point to taste for the food you're eating, so you know if things are, like, yeah. off or poisonous or whatever, but... Your balls don't actually consume um, nutrients. No, I, so. I, I remember reading why. Because there, there's taste buds in other places too. I can't remember where, but like, it, it's weird and it seems to make no sense. Yeah, the more the more we discover about the human body, the the freakier it all becomes. Mm. We're all just like these weird, moldy creatures. We're all just mouldy creatures. We're all just mouldy creatures. So, if we need to put this to death, we need to find what what would you say is a really distinctive food that we'd instantly be able to identify if we were to put it on our testicles. I think mint, some sort of mint thing, would be a good idea. Mint, but the mint mintiness on your nuts is quite intense. So, Don't, I wouldn't yeah. start there. I'd start with the sugar water and see. So, yeah, if uh, anyone knows anything about this, um, any ball scientists out there wanna? Leave yeah, a comment yeah. on the, or on the Reddit thread or something. Go ahead. I like cinnamon, fans. but I don't really want to dunk my nuts in cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. That was my topic anyway. I thought it was a fun one to get us going. Well, speaking of things that taste great, um, we went to <laughs> Weatherspoons, <laughs> and it was Alex's and I, uh, Alex's and mine. It was your your first first experience experience at Spoons. Yeah. Is Weatherspoons like a worldwide I thing? No, I think it's just or is it an quite English a British thing. <laughs> but what? Yeah, Spoons, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, go ahead. Explain. Weatherspoons is this like uh, it's a, a chain of, of pubs, but it's hard pubs. to even call them pubs. Yeah, they're they're every English person knows what Spoons is. They're so fucking shit. They're ubiquitous with the with our culture. Well, I mean, we've always known of Weatherspoons. Of like course. we we'd never been in one, but we knew what it was. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's well known because it's like the place you go to on a night out before you actually go on the night out. Cause, or cheap like, you drinks. know, pre's or whatever, yeah. Because it's so cheap. You can buy, the drinks there are, are dead cheap. So it's really Yeah, that, was, that was the one positive I could take away from the experience. Was like, well, apart from the fact, the one we went into, no drink, no draft drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of their taps weren't working, I guess. <laughs> so every single one. Have Not just one barrel, like yeah, everyone. Every single drink on tap was a no-no. So we could only go bottled, like ciders, and yeah, cokes, which were still cheap. So really oh, cheap, yeah. and I appreciate it. But they also sell food. What's well, a restaurant? It's a restaurant. And obviously, I've I've worked in recruiting for these places, and I know that it's not. There's no ovens. There's they the only thing they have is microwaves. Every, <laughs> all the food is done like from a packet into a microwave. But the thing is, like, there is good microwavable food out there. Mm -hmm. You know, ready meals. Yeah, there are some good ass ready meals if you know where to look. Yeah. However, um, whichever ones they they're using at Weatherspoons, uh. They're like hell. Asda's basics or something. They They're more are like Iceland. Awful. Oh, Iceland. Woo! Because I, I've, I, when I was younger, I went to Riverspoons quite often. It was like, oh, it's my birthday. Let's go to Riverspoons. Like, I was a fucking stupid kid. Okay. And then recently, I, I went back after like a ten-year like break from Riverspoons. Yeah. I went there in the morning with my parents. I bought a break, a full English breakfast. Which is like three pound. It's like unbelievably <laughs> cheap. It's crazy cheap. And it's just like got the sauce. It's got you know. It's got everything you expect. And it is like barely passable for the money. It's just like 
this is okay. And then I got pancakes, and it's just like, and I got pizza. Because they started adding, like, these fresh, ready, like, yeah. pizzas. And the pizzas are just... They're the best thing on the menu, and they are bad. <laughs> yeah, so so when we went there of th- in the evening, you had an all-day breakfast. A v- vegan one, You had actually. a vegetarian... Yeah, let, let's... Get, let's um. I really want to paint like a detailed picture of, of, of this experience. So before we talk about the food, I want to describe what the the sort of mise en scene of the of the pub is oh, like. Geez. So you like walk in. Um, this is the one in Chippenham. If anyone listening knows that, the spoons in Chippenham. Um, fairly nice building, no problems with that. It's um, just yeah, by the river. Nice, you walk in, you're like, oh, it's a, you know, it's just a, it's just a pub, isn't it? It's just a pub. Whatever. I, more of a restaurant vibe than a, a pub. Yeah, but you see the bar and you're like, oh, no, it looks like... It doesn't look like ghetto or anything like that. No, it's all no, right. no. And then everything sort of started to fall apart. Like, you go sit down. The, no no bef- one, like... No, before we even got to the door, it was, it was, it was falling apart. Because <laughs> right on the door it said, yeah, ooh, ooh, there's no drinks. Oh, yeah, greeted by the... Sorry, no... Uh, no tap. No on tap drinks available. It's a bit like a printed out piece of A4. Then we go and we sit down and... James informs us that you can acquire your beverages and food in Weatherspoons without actually interacting with anyone and you can just download an app and just buy on the app and then they just bring it over to you. So it's like, first off, it's kind of like defeating the entire point of like why pubs were so essential yeah, to like yeah. British culture for so long. <laughs> it's like you go up to the bar and you order a drink and like you're forced into conversation. No, nope. it's like cut that part out of it. So, um, and then all the people that work there, of course, are just, like, really young teenagers that, like, don't give a fuck. They, they do, do not, not give a single fuck. Yeah, they... <laughs> so, I don't know if we just got, like, <laughs> someone on their last day or something, or their first day. Yeah. But, like, no, because I've heard, like, some of the spoons in, like, the big cities and stuff, London and whatnot, they're just, they're just nicer inherently, more popular, more yeah, people yeah. go there, they've got more to prove there, I suppose, so they're yeah. not, you know, shipping them. Um... So, yeah, once we sat down and we're just, you know, taking it all in a little bit, we noticed no music, no sort of quiet background music, no nothing. nothing. Um, aside from <laughs> this, this, what sounded like a ticking time bomb, just in the kitchen somewhere, just a dee, dee, like just constantly. And no one seemed to be like acknowledging it. It wasn't quiet if it was loud. No, it was really like, loud. It was really loud. It, yeah, it was like that loud. And it was so loud that when you walked out of the building, <laughs> You could hear it from inside, yeah. you know, from outside. Um, so, yeah, and then, like, the more you look at it, the more you're noticing, like, lamps just, like, half the, off the, place, the wall. And When I last went there, the place is, it doesn't look like it gets cleaned ever. Like, there was tomato. Last time I went, there was one wall where there was, like, thick splodges of tomato ketchup just stuck on the walls. <laughs> Rock solid that had obviously <laughs> never been cleaned off. Handprints all over the, the windows. windows. Like, the lamps... They are falling apart. The shades are like completely hanging off, yeah. and it's just—it looks awful, really bad. Yeah. It's extremely characterless, though. Yeah, like all the personalities sapped. Yeah, like well, just think of other big chains, like even Wagamama. Green King and all of that. Like, Wagamama Nando's—they got more. Like, yeah, when you walk stuff. into one of them, like although they are all the same, they are clearly going for like a style. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Weatherspoons is just like... Well, they want it to be like a pub, don't they? They want it to feel like, oh, this is me local sort of thing, don't they? But it's just like... Yeah, but they can't... It doesn't work, no. There's no character to make people, like, for it to be their local. It's yeah. so dry of anything. So we we ordered the food, and as you were saying... The app, yeah. Um, yeah, we ordered food with the app, or whatever. I ordered... Uh, yeah, a, a, a vegan breakfast or All something. All day vegan breakfast. Because I was, I was too, I was honestly too frightened to order the meat because mm. I, I didn't know what it would might potentially do to me. Was all. Um, Jim got a, a a delicious pasta dish. A uh, chicken al- was it a chicken? No, it was a pa- it pasta was alfredo. Just, yeah, with a posh name, in a in a weather. Al- no, it was new on the menu. <laughs> oh really? And uh, I, I, I went straight in and ordered the biggest pizza I could and chips. So we're all spending like five for each, basically. Um, <laughs> Less than. <laughs> so I, I can see the appeal in that sense. Like if you're, oh, yeah. if you're looking to save cash, uh, there is a value there. Um, 
but what were, what was just like mind blowing to me was I think you two no Jim was Jim got served his and it was like that the person that came over the the waiter to serve it was like a strange delivery of like food like well we we noticed them sort of wandering around the restaurant before and yeah. just to add this bef- bowl before you make the order you have to select your table so surely the waiting staff should know where the tables are yeah but anyway they they were walking around for a while and then like disappeared and then came back out and then came to the table and said are you guys waiting for food yeah and we were like yeah but like that wasn't her delivery was was very odd like i noticed it immediately like in her voice it was like when you're really trying not to laugh you know yeah it was it was like what, what like is that a question like what are you actually like what is the vibe you're giving me right now? Like, yeah. it, it was almost like... I don't know if it was nervous laughter, because, like... Yeah, I don't know. It was very, stuff, very weird. Know. But I noticed it the first time, I was like, oh, it must have just been a one-off thing. And then when they brought mine over, she, like, almost couldn't s- speak, because she was, like, <laughs> laughing. You know? <laughs> like, she couldn't finish her... She couldn't speak properly, because she was, yeah. like, laughing. And I was like... <laughs> What the fuck Alex, is going on? when this happened, Alex, fucking, I've never seen Alex break this much. He was sitting there just laughing for like five minutes. He'd stop and then just. No, it was actually <laughs> mind blowing. No, because I was like, I've heard stories about Weatherspoons, and you're telling me the first time I come in and order something, the, the staff completely ignore you until they come over and they, they bring the food. The laughable food over while they laugh at you for buying it. Basically, <laughs> they're laughing at you, like out of just pure embarrassment for everyone involved. I, I actually couldn't believe it. I was like, "So do you like, do you want me to not eat this? Yeah. Do you want me to like complain? Like, what the fuck? Like, do you want from me right now? It's such a weird like way. Like, why would you ever train or let your staff get away with that kind of shit? It's yeah. like bizarre. And then you just you couldn't you couldn't stop laughing like even two minutes after you would just stop and then you'd laugh you'd burst out laughing again and then I was laughing and then people were staring at but, us. Like, the the worst thing was she had to come to the table three times for each of our orders. Yeah. So like the first time there was a little bit of a laugh. The second time she was straight up laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and putting the food on the table like laughing. <laughs> laughing like th- this is just I'm sorry. It was almost yeah. like an apology. Because she knew, like, <laughs> that this ain't fucking, this ain't anything, like, posh or nothing. You know what you're in for. Just yeah. here you go, have it. Fuck it. And then the, but then weirdly, the third time, the final meal, the fuck was up. straight faced. Yeah, she was over down. it by then. There you go. And then that, she really tried on that one. But then I bought pudding, which was <laughs> awful. And then she walked over and she basically just threw it at me and then the cutlery went everywhere. And it was <laughs> yeah, just like, just launched a spoon at you. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> For them, it was like, we got to get this over with just as soon mm-hmm. as possible. Like, no dilly dally, and they take the food, gone. Like, I don't want to have to interact or anything. It's yeah, yeah. So funny. It's like a mechanical, like, process. It's so, so strange. So, yeah, I don't think I'd eat there again, but I'd, 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 no. I'd drink there. The, yeah. The pizza yeah. was surprisingly because of the price. bad, but it's just like, when you get like a 12 inch pizza for like four pound or whatever, it's like, that's okay. Yeah, they must that's rely on, you know, people going, getting pissed, and then they get a bit hungry, and then they yeah. just order. And it, like when you're that pissed, like it really doesn't matter what you're eating. Mm-hmm. So I I still, I can still taste that pizza. I don't know, I must have like put my balls on it or something, but I can still taste it, and it's not a nice taste. I really, I'm kind of sick already. From yeah, it. I barely touched the the food I ordered. I wasn't even that hungry anyway. I was just sort of... I wanted to experience it. Mine was like... I mean, if I'd have paid any more than like £4.50, I would have... I think annoyed. I would have had to complain. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, if that was, was like priced at like £6 to £7, it'd be like, this is... This is this yeah. is like genuinely stealing money from people. This mm-hmm. is terrible. Yeah. Any other... Uh, Weatherspoon's uh, commentary. Don't go. Don't go there for food. Just don't waste your time <coughs> going to Weatherspoon's. Unless you're getting pissed. That's fine then. Really cheap. Yeah, dog. Yeah, it's perfectly understandable. Um, There's something I want to address from last episode, actually, that I was supposed to do up the front, but I forgot. But just remembered. 
Last episode, of course, was the uh, Squash on the Rocks episode. Um, Famous. Which a few Jarlings actually, uh, you know, they gave it a try and they rung our praises for their um, Squash on the Rocks. If you don't know what we're talking about, episode 199B, that one. <laughs> um, but there was, there was a bit of confusion over what Squash is. Um, as as was my fear going into the episode, I was like, "What if people don't have squash around the world?" Because you know, every, Jarcast yeah. ain't just rooted in the UK. Like I'm people pretty from sure all around the world listen. Every everywhere has a squash equivalent, it and might that's be the a thing. Yeah, name, but Wait, squash really? is a thing. Yeah, like there there were multiple comments saying for like for a lot of the episode, they thought we were just talking about like eggplant squash. Yeah, because you know that's what a lot of people uh, call no, it around the world. No, eggplant sucks. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify. How would you even describe it? It is it's kind of just... Uh, it's a cordial. Yeah. It's a really concentrated, fruity drink you add water to to make a watery, fruity drink. Yeah. Artificial juice. Yeah. Yeah. But people call it Delicious. juice. Like, it people, is juice. People do call it juice, and it pisses me off. It's yeah, we mentioned juice. that yeah, last episode. It is, oh, it is a crime to do that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah... Uh, and apparently some people, like, they, they simply cannot get juice in their country. No Sorry, way. squash. No, it got me doing it now. Um, can't get... They can probably get juice, because you can just make juice. You can't really make squash, can you? Mm. No, I don't believe this. Surely. No, there was, a, like, in the comments, I'd have to go and look back, but there were people saying, man, you really made me jealous, because I wanted to try some. No way, I don't believe... Th- no, everywhere. Because what do kids drink? Kids have squash. They, no, um, I feel like in um, more like Americanized countries, they've got that like powder. Do you remember like that? <clears throat> yeah. Our dad from New Zealand's Milo. obsessed with this weird like pi- powder drink. Is it called Milo? No, Milo's, Milo's like that chocolate, chocolate one. one. Yeah. <coughs> no. Um. Yeah, that orange. This stuff. weird. This like yeah, and it seemed very American. What's, what's that? There's an American one that's really famous. I don't know what the is. Is Kool Aid? Kool Aid, sorry. Kool Aid. Is that like a powder? Yes, yeah. yes Kool Aid. But it, it, uh, I would say our squash is much nicer than those powders. The powder yeah, stuff, we, like, is we very is hardcore. We don't really have powder stuff. Hmm. No. Yeah, it might be. It honestly might be illegal. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, for a workaround for the people with the powder, so what you should do is you get the powder and you add, like, the, the the smallest amount of water you can before it's thick, and then, as long as it's a liquid, put it on the wax, and you should have an equivalent <laughs> squash on the wax. It, it will be way worse. You though. could try Kool-Aid on the rocks, but... Just powder with ice. Yeah, but the powder would, like, stick to the ice cube. Yeah. And then you, like, put the ice cube in your mouth. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> it, like, melts it into a flavour in your mouth. Well, That's an option. Mean, That's an option. It's or... A, yeah. I've heard that a lot of people who, you know, drink those kind of powdered drinks, if they want like a more, you know, substantial hit, they just sort of do a line of it and just, <laughs> um, and it really hits <laughs> them least, hard. No, don't. Don't you remember that? Like everyone would like dumb kids would do shit like that, like With snort, and stuff. snort. You're, you're talking. You, the, the dumb kid is in the womb. <laughs> yeah, everyone tried it, and, it was, and the, that immediate regret. No, it was cocoa powder. That's that's bad. That that I did it once, and my it, I did it. I did so much of it, my whole nose just kind of turned into like a, a paste. Oh my <laughs> and god! Like, it's not, it was gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did it. Wow. Oh Christ! On that note, um, don't snort baking don't powder snort, or um, cocoa powder. Various powders, oh, we especially do not. not the pure white one. Don't do that one. Not sure Flour. Bit. Flour. The other one. I did flower. The Colombian special. Don't do that one. But yeah, aside from you know squashes and shooting up powders up our noses, uh, we'll be back for more funnies after the messages that are about to play in a moment. Doopy doo. Da 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 da. Yeah. That- Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck you. This, I'd say this is the hardest part of doing the cast, is trying to time that when the camera's going to go up, honestly. No, it's easy. No, sometimes we get it like spot on and it's like, yes. Like maybe one second either side. No, this is, you're just shut up. You're just wrong. This is really easy. That's because you're, you're the one that you don't. You just rely on us being like, okay, we'll interrupt you so we can stop it. No, because because if, if I'm not qualified to do that, so I let you do it. Yeah, so it's easy for you. That's what I just said. Exactly. Communism. Mom, hello, the 
this is me, Arnie. Oh, you do realize that there are Bebo shirts available, right? Take a look at the really cute shirts. Look in the description or under the video for more. Welcome to the second half of the cast, where we head over to the Jar Media subreddit and we answer questions from the community. Oh yes, mate. Um, Peng. I just realised because we're 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 doing we're recording this mere hours before it's going live, which is That's something true. we usually try and avoid. We're um, we're living life on the edge. In, yeah, but because and it's all James's fault. Yeah, we could have done it yesterday, but instead... Oh, me too tired. Can we just snuggle up and watch Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, instead of, did, instead of doing watch it... Attack in, of the Clones. Yeah, instead of doing it in plenty of time yesterday, we watched Attack of the Clones and watched um, Jim play Outer Worlds for like for two while. hours. That just a like serial killer hours. running around just killing every, every NPC he could. Fine then. After Weatherspoons, obviously, so that's why we didn't record, because we were post Weatherspoons. Yeah, all the life just sucked out of us. I, I still heard that beeping last night. Really? The fucking beeping. Oh, the Weatherspoons oh, beep. The Weatherspoons beep. Please, actually, can some, any jarling, go to Weatherspoons and see if there's a beep. We want to know if this is yeah, like is a... Yeah, is this like a Weatherspoons thing? <laughs> yeah. So you always know that you're in the spoon. Yeah, just uh, let us know in the comments below. Or send a direct message to uh, Alex. Okay, yeah. Sorry, the, the delay there was simply because it's Monday, so the new suggestion thread came in. So I had to go find the one from last week. Oh, schnitz. Yeah. Don't worry, it's all, it's all fine. There. Oh, is it Oh, Alex? snap. This first one comes in from Angus Ass Invader. Who says, hi fellas, I'm planning a trip to Swindon for the first time from Bath. I'm excited because I've never been to a third world country before. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions for those who have been. What jabs and vaccines do I need to protect me from the disease ridden streets? Everything. <laughs> Should I wear a hazmat suit or gas mask? Both. <laughs> With nuclear filters, you might need that as well. <laughs> also, my mum said I should be armed to deal with the feral mutant population. Is this really necessary? Yes. Thanks, Gary. Um, I will say my suggestion is why would you leave Bath to go to Swindon? I can't think of any if you're someone who lives in Bath like what does Swindon have that you don't yeah, there that, yeah. that wouldn't still be close to Bristol? Are there any Bristol? strip clubs in Bath? Yes. There's probably much nicer ones. I wouldn't know because I've never been to one. I can't say I've been to a strip club in Bath. We should do, we should actually go to the one in Swindon just so we can do a cast do a episode on it. Yeah. Book out like the private um <laughs> party room and we'll do the the cast in there. Uh, I might vomit, but the funny reply though from my balls are Richie says, Ensure you're wearing your finest Adidas tracksuit in order to blend in with the local life forms. <laughs> you can wear other tracksuits too. However, the Adidas tra tracksuit has a level of classism and universal admiration in those parts. No, no yeah, that's that's definitely Yeah, if you if you go for the tracksuit um routine, make sure they're matching. Like, that's the one thing. It has to yeah, be matching, yeah. like, top and bottom. Make it, uh, like, as gaudy as possible as well. Like, make it bright green. No, you can just wear, like, red. the, the, the tracksuit bottoms and then just a normal top or jumper. You don't need to go full on. No, I'm saying if you really want to blend, if that's your, like, goal. The matching tracky is mm -hmm. is kind of a Swindon staple in but my mind, anyway. M like, matching, so they're both, like, Adidas, but one's, like, bright purple, the other's bright yellow. Whatever, that, like on the color wheel, make sure they're not opposite each other. Make sure yeah, they right they clash other. as much as possible. So yeah. like green and bright blue, pink and blue shoes. Yeah, no, like bright red trainers, yellow track suit bottoms, mm. purple top, something like that. At Volta Swindon, there's nothing there that you want to go to. There's a there's a, a shopping center that is quite nice. That's, That's the best thing in Swindon. Yeah. Magic roundabout. It's pointless no. going if you're not going to go look at that thing. That one, the, the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, the, I, I think that, like, the, the mechanisms involved <laughs> in figuring out how to make something like that is more impressive than yeah. the Great Wall of China. Because the design of Swindon was so fucked. They, like, designed it so <laughs> yeah. all these roads, like, came together and, like, shit, how are we going to sort this out? Oh, Why don't we put, like, okay. five roundabouts next to each other? It's like <laughs> in a eight. circle. It's, it's like one roundabout and then, like, six others around it. <laughs> in a roundabout. Like, there's, a... Imagine, like, you, you've, 
learnt how to drive, you've been driving for like 30 years, and like yes. pretty ordinary roads, yeah. and then you go to Swindon, and you see that. No, but it's worth adding that when we say roundabout, <laughs> everyone knows a roundabout as, you know, an actual structure, it's like a, yeah. a mound. The, it, there's, they're, they're not. It's a, a fucking car park. <laughs> just loads of cars it, are just it, driving in random directions. It's the most intimidating thing as you're driving up to it. If you've never been through it, it's it's pretty hardcore. I try and keep to the edge because the edge is like easy to maneuver around. Yeah, yeah. Around about, so. But it works. No, no, no. It, no, it undeniably I'm, I'm gonna, works. I'm gonna. We've we've been like at late night. We've driven through or around the magic roundabout, and it's right. It's easier. There's a there's a Swindon football club literally there, mm. and I went to watch a game once. So you're talking like ten thousand people leaving the grounds with cars oh everywhere. My God. That showed me how insane the magic roundabout was because it worked. In that where yeah. there was cars everywhere, it fucking worked, and I was just like, I wouldn't want to be in that roundabout because that looks stressful. It, it, it's like a, a masterful piece of human design. Yeah, the, like pyramids. Forget about it. Boring. That's stupid. Not, yeah, that's Trying, just putting what? Yeah, a big Toblerone. W Anyone could do that. Yeah, the the Great Wall of China, a wall, a straight wall that's just long. Yeah, maybe if people Great. were driving cars up and down the pyramids all day long, there'd be something to it. But, yeah, yeah. You know, Magic Roundabout's actually accomplishing a task every day, saving it so many people. It is an engineering masterpiece because it, it it it's not just pretty and beautiful and no I mean, quite quite the opposite to be honest it's it's repugnant to look at yeah, yeah it's but, like a <laughs> cement octopus octopus as but is all the it works yeah it does the job it needs to and that's all it was designed for yeah for those just google the magic roundabout swing we've talked about the magic roundabout a lot it's but, one of the recurring themes but i don't get people people in foreign countries when they think about england they mock the magic roundabout and it's just like they don't get it. They've never been. They cannot. They don't understand how fucked the roads are in this country in terms of the but, way it's But all roundabouts designed. are actually genius. Yeah. Like, instead of having traffic lights at every single possible road where there's, like, mm -hmm. another road being introduced, like. Yeah. It, it uses the space way better. Just going. We have to be all way more cautious about the the space we're using it. Because like if you're in a, if you're in America, like as all you know miles. You don't of space. you don't need yeah, a roundabout because you can just build the roads. So it kind of takes yeah, they two build everything on like around. a grid system, don't they? But we don't have that luxury. But but in doing that, they have traffic lights at every single junction. They do. Yeah, and so, that's why this so like accidents. when it's busy, it's going to be constant stop, start, stop, start. Worse for the environment. Roundabout. You just keep on going, basically. Like every, you might have just to give way slow to your down right. and stop. But then th that's when that's when it's coming up to an issue because the English government and councils are putting round putting traffic lights on roundabouts. That's a thing now. Yeah, what's well, even when the it point gets really of busy. The roundabout though, like it might as well just be a junction. Yeah. Like if if it's, it's when there's traffic yeah. lights and there's three. Like, I want exits. I want a game show, where. The. They pluck people from places like America that don't really have roundabouts in the same mm. way, and they put them on one side of the magic roundabout, and you have to get to the other side <laughs> on, on, <laughs> on peak rush hour in Swindon and just see what happens. <laughs> that isn't, that's a great idea. We're a hardy folk here, so for us, it's nothing, but it'll be like, you know, like you see pictures of like in Japan at rush hour where the people are like sardined in and shit, and it seems mm. like the most terrifying thing it's it's kind of like that but for us it the what the 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 olympics it's you know it needs to just be the magic roundabout test to test like the intelligence of the countries is to just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let them do the magic roundabout and see what happens dick the head has this to say what do, what do you look back on with the most cringe or regret dubstep park or two is not an acceptable answer uh probably dubstep park or one <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in it. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's a seminal video, dude. That no, be I, shit I love on that, that video. I love that video. Just, Jesus, give me a goddamn break. It, Cod immense. one. Cod one. The card one is... Really no, let's choose something that isn't a video, because it's too easy. Like, we all could choose five each. Uh, yeah, the Minecraft one. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh, don't. Um, I don't know if I should say my anime face. You mm. never left it. <laughs> okay, just because I said I, I started watching anime again yesterday doesn't mean I, I didn't leave it. Yeah. I feel like, for me, it's like any time I use social media, 
Mm. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're in that age where, like, I guess I joined Facebook in like year ten, maybe. Yeah. That's when you're you gotta be your most embarrassing. Well, I wouldn't actually know, seeing as it, like I only luckily I probably dodged like a bunch of even more embarrassing stuff from before then. You know? God, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, like if I joined up when I was in year six, so what, like ten? There's gonna be some like stuff that will haunt you forever, you know. If yeah. You, if you've if you've been documenting your life since then, because we have at least I have the luxury of like, <laughs> if everything pre 2010, I can barely remember because it wasn't on social media in the same way. So I can just forget about that and have a blissful time. But all these fucking kids growing up with the bullying each other on Instagram, like they'll have those those Messed haunting up. memories strapped in yeah. their their whole lives probably. <laughs> If it's like with us, it's like the the Quinn Jeffy stuff we find funny because it was all in the Facebook group where we just shit. Yeah, yeah that, we at least had the foresight to do that. Actually, is like keep our embarrassing stuff away. Yeah, you in know? like a locked. Not group. public. It was in yeah a locked group. No one could see. So it's only embarrassing to yeah, us. We, it wasn't even really like the group thing. It was just a group chat that we, or at least I ever inputted. Mm. No, yeah, that was that was a group, but you were only in the chat for it because like you a, never posted yeah. on the actual group. Because no. that's where everything happened was actually in the group itself. Oh, I, I wasn't in. I, like all I care about is like the communication side of shit like that. Like it's, I, I just can't be bothered with like, hey guys, this is me like here. Yeah, no one, no one doing cares. This the, the good, the good thing about that group is we, like, some of the funny things we we now we bring forward, and it's like a thing now. Well, yeah, now we can you know like stab, drowned, and left, and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that is it. That's that's the that's the answer is that that one thing. <laughs> but like it's it's kind of sad in a way there because like you need to go through phases like that in order to like Whoa. progress and grow. You know, like you if you if you spend your whole life doing everything in your power to never be cringy, you're never going to express anything. You know, and if you're, you're always scared yeah. of being embarrassing or you know cringy. Like you're never going to no, that's it. No, put yourself out there by, in any by form. trying to not be cringy. They are the cringiest. Yeah, because you're they like you're realize. like putting your hands up and you're like fuck it then. Like I'm just not gonna take part really. You know. Hmm. Wow, cringe. Yeah, man. Wow, cringe. That's where it all came from, dog. Jive four two, o sixty nine, for twenty sixty nine, has this to say. Good day, fellow clunge plunderers. Holy day. fuck, that is vivid. Boy, do I have a jar-related anecdote for you. I was listening to episode 105 with no headphones in. This only happens when I'm home alone to avoid dreadful embarrassment from listening to such a shit podcast. <laughs> when my dad decided Oof. to come home, as he parked his car in the garage, the podcast stopped. I went over to my iPad to see why and saw car multimedia at the top of the screen. Turns out my iPad, which had been previously connected to my dad's car's Bluetooth speakers as a way of playing Spotify on car rides, had automatically connected <laughs> when the car got in range. I paused the podcast, but not before the car speakers blasted Jim ex exclaiming, Oh, give me the tortilla! In the most offensive Mexican accent he could muster, so fucking loud that I could hear it through not only the car, but the garage walls. Astoundingly, Father had nothing to say about this when he came in. He must have either thought his radio turned on by accident, or that he was just going fucking nuts. Love <laughs> love from Australia. Keep it up. That's, well, we know that's a lie, because I would never do that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, nice lie. Can it... Would it have been funnier or less funny if it was genuinely someone like in Mexico or someone oh. like a Spanish heritage? Thing? Well, actually, it'll probably be like <laughs> I don't know what plays on the radio there. Like. <laughs> I just like that. Oh, no, shit. I'm just digging a way deeper hole for myself. <laughs> good, good don't, little don't, don't connect to just devices like that because things can happen and you but, don't want them to happen. Yeah, how does that even happen? Did he? St how how was he listening to it before? His dad the got there again. Yeah, he said he was on. Oh right, yeah. And if the Bluetooth yes, was yeah, on, it yeah. also connects. Damn. It's it's a good thing it was that to be honest, because there are way worse things that could have blasted out of the dad's. More car. embarrassing things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some real absolutely oof things that could have been said. <laughs> okay. 
If you do not stop, I will eat my brownie. We have an interesting one from new underscore juggernaut. Seeing as Alex was older than the rest of the cast members, how did his friend what? group in his year... Was. Yeah. React to having people younger than them in their friend group. Do you never even think about it? Did you guys all get along? I asked because at my school no one interacted with years above or below them until we were in sick form and would spend a lot of time together. This is where I probably became friends with one of my best friends ever. I'd known him since I was 10, however, had never interacted with him significantly due to being in different year groups. But we quickly found we had lots of common, including that we both watched Jar. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, Alec, you had your the group you hang around with in school, which was like people in your year group, and then yeah. we joined, and we we're just like four ridiculous but like we kids. Because we obviously grew up together, and like we we're always in the same house. And when you had friends over, like we'd no we'd normally always just hang around anyway. Yeah, so like yeah. to us, I mean, it was nothing because we were brothers, and it all just stemmed from there. Like you know? the the friend group we had was like I I didn't know you when we joined. I met yeah. you when we yeah joined. we met in we well, were in year seven. But so. then the other two already knew you, so it was like the friendship was already there. Yeah, that's the thing, like. Especially if it had been over such a long time, you know, since early primary school and everything, so it was just, yeah, nothing. It was normal, it was fun. Yeah. We were just the cool kids who hanged around with the cooler kids. Zingo. If, <laughs> if only that was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Neutron. No, Mr. Neutron. Says, sup lads, what episode would you recommend to get some complete stranger to the cast... As a good introduction to it. Uh, the normal Cheers. episode. Cheers. The normal episode. This is something that I, I see a lot of discussion around on the on the subreddit. It was like people comments. saying, where should I start? Yeah, the like, yeah. And... Like, oh, yeah, I watched the Nostalgia Critic video, and now I want to give the, the, the cast a shot. Um, where do we begin? I don't know, honestly. Well, I mean, if you want, like, a normal introduction... One. <clears throat> normal episode. I would say don't start <laughs> with the normal episode. You've got to build up to that shit. <laughs> uh... Honestly, th there's this kind of uh, rule that they say. I don't know who started this or or coined it, but they say it takes about a hundred episodes for you to get good at, at podcasting or like your podcast or whatever. Mm. So if there is any truth to that, then maybe start around there 100. somewhere. Hundred, hundred would be a good idea. I'd say start with the cave episode. The new, the cave new, episode. the new wave of jar. When we, we yeah. got this, set. that was sort of a, a a changing point, reverberation, a surge of new life. It, it, yeah, it is a weird like. I don't know if issue is the right word, but like, it's a lot of content. Yeah, two hundred plus episodes yeah, of hour I mean, long or more. That I I've fallen out of listening to podcasts basically because of that. That just, very reason, because yeah. like if I miss that on one week, it'll be like, oh, I'll just catch up next week and like double and then up. They but then stack on top of each other. Then like you miss two, and then it's like, oh. see, as a as an avid podcast consumer, mm. I must I must be by far the the one who listens to the most podcasts. Like constantly, it's like my, yeah, my life blood. About a year or two ago, I I could compete with you there, but I just yeah. can't do it anymore. Yeah, like, um, not enough time in the week. But I'm the kind of person who. Like I, I just I see one that just happens to catch my eye. I'll listen to it, and if I like it, I'll actually go back, and mm. usually do the whole backlog. Because even like if there's an episode you're not driving with, just delete it, go to the next one. Because there's so many. I mean, yeah, yeah. If the subjects or you know it's not flowing right, you just don't bother. With it. Yeah, if there's honestly, if there's one thing, there's one thing you could do because the uh, audio feed only started like at around 170 or something like that, maybe a bit earlier. You could just start from the podcast feed, because then at least you know they're all going to be, you know, suitable for audio. And you know, we've done a hundred episodes by then, so there'd be some structure, maybe. It's like <laughs> no, the one podcast I listen to is probably the biggest, the bit, the longest running podcast ever, which is the Joe Rogan one. He's got like fifteen hundred. You, I just pick the ones I want to watch and then go from there. Yeah, he does one like every day though. So. Yeah. But that, if that's the way you want to do podcasts, then you just do that. If the if the if the the title on thumbnail was funny, you just watch it. Mm. 
Because that's um, a good one. We have, there, some people responded to this question to give them answers. Um, Knockeron suggested Hot Girl Booty Spider-Man or Final Yogs Ever. <clears throat> Always like seeing what people suggest. Cat Spider 2 said Episode 9 is great, but would for sure scare them off. <laughs> Honestly, Episode 100, if that's even its real name. Yeah, that's not a bad call. Um, isn't that one called Episode 50, though? God, it's confusing. It might be episode 100. Have no, we still not done 50? No, we've done 50. I don't know. I don't know. It was like four year, three years ago since we did. 50? Instant 5 SARS says Brain Perish Scene, episode 91. It's pretty nice. And the final suggestion from Lisa and Booty is just start from the very beginning and binge till you're up to date. It goes from being so shit that it is incredible to being an actually great show. Not to mention you get all the memes and backstory explained. Boom! <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we are at the top. We quite literally start from the bottom floor flat, yeah. sat on the floor. <laughs> now we're at the top floor of a house. We're going to need like on a, a sofa. house in, <laughs> in <laughs> Abu Dhabi, <laughs> in the Hollywood Hills. Sitting on really, really <laughs> tall chairs. Bazunga says, where is I build everything? Yeah, where, yeah, is, where is I build everything, huh? Uh... To be honest, I haven't built any Lego in a long you, time. No, you made a promise. I someone, did make a promise. You did. I, the, just the channel existing is, is a mere promise. No, um, someone someone did a bet and was just like, if this happens, you've got to upload a video to I build everything. And you, you haven't done it. I've done the bid. I, I, I did my part of the deal. You haven't done a video. You know what really kind of messed it up a little bit for me? Was this... Have you heard about these new changes YouTube have made to yes. um, what is considered children's content? Mm-hmm. Um, they're like cracking down because of all the like weird shit that was going on, on YouTube, I guess, with all these like creepy like Elsa and Spider-Man tit licking videos or whatever yeah. the fuck is like out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so now like, great, like right as I wanted to make my little Lego channel, I guess now I can just be as rude and crass as I want on it then. Because at first I was going to be like, oh, okay, I, I guess I'll try and keep it family friendly, seeing as like the chances are the people clicking on it are going to be a bit younger. If not, I suppose I'll why, just be completely vile. Why put this fucking piece down? Put this fucking motherfucker down. Why would yours not be classed as actual like family-friendly content? Because no, it it, it changes the 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 channel. Because you have to ch you have to choose if you have to say yes. My videos oh. are designed for children, and then it goes through certain checks. The channel operates differently. The algorithms are completely different. It's really fucked some people over, like... Ashens is one, I remember him talking about it. Um, Jang Bricks, I imagine. Jang Bricks has been really affected by it. Uh, I know, like, loads of the LEGO YouTubers, and they've all, like, had to panic, like, shift a bunch of stuff because of it, like... Yeah, dude. But, but it's mainly because it's like, if I'm going to sit down to make a video, there's, like, a hierarchy of importance, mm. you know? Like, it's Aichi, Jar, Sardonicast, and the LEGO thing's way at the bottom. So... And on the subject of making videos, uh, I am going to start making them this year. Oh, really? I, I'm going to invest in the GoPro. Is this a promise? A New Year's resolution? You know what uh, making promises is like? Well, you'll have, you'll have people to watch immediately. Because I just want to do, like, driving stuff. With actual, like, a GoPro on my head. Like, a, of, like driving <laughs> yeah. around tracks and that type of stuff is just something oh, I want awesome. to do. That'd be sick, dude. Like night driving in the rain, it's just like really like kind of chill. And Drifting just, vids. Uh, if I had a car that could, <laughs> I'm gonna do that later this year. So you're gonna drift later this year. No, I can do that right now in no. the car outside the <laughs> house. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna get get on top of that. Ali B eight. It says, do you think there's any correlation in your taste of music with your taste of movies slash games slash other mediums? Oh shit. I would say so. Because a lot of my music taste stems from film. I would it... say no. Really? Interesting. Wrong, but interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's about me, not you. Okay. It's, uh, it's I can't I can't say because I don't know my taste in games or music. I don't I what? Okay, you guys answer the question for me. I would say music. Yes, with James. Okay. Really? What? Why? Because James, say... James is like the media he consumes all fits under like a certain like image, 
it's all like the car culture Japanese so and it all Dunkirk fits into it. and Eurobeat <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> play a correlation there yeah I love Dunkirk but it's just like Fast and Furious Initial D Forza they're, they're still the same but then I think yeah. I love I love jazz. Jazz is a, a thing I love. I don't listen to it often, but I love it. And that doesn't correlate to like the movies or games I play. Do, do you not have a soft spot for it because of Cowboy Bebop? <laughs> yes, I have a massive <laughs> soft spot for it because of Cowboy Bebop. Zingo. Uh, and just anime I didn't know if actually. mine are as easy to nail down. Because mm. you're game. You're really. I don't really weird. have a personality. Is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the games you play. They. The games you get really singed into, they don't really overlap, like Sekiro. Psychiro, yeah. Red Dead, they're completely, like, different. I think it all affects each other somewhat. Like, mm. the only reason, like, I fi find a fair amount of music from, like, games, movies, TV shows and stuff is because, like, it starts with me, like, watching a movie and then say it's something like The Social Network. Soundtrack by Trent Reznor. Then I listen to that, get obsessed with that, and then I'm like, what else has he done? Then you find Nine Inch Nails and stuff like that, and it all it all stems like that. You see, I would say a lot of people are like that because it's like when you hear something you like, you're you're naturally gonna yeah try and find more like it. But I don't um... yeah, like um that that app Soundhound is like awesome. So if you if like a movie's playing, you're watching it in your living room, and a song starts playing in, in a Peaky Blinders or something, you can whip out your phone, put on Sound Hound, and it like tells you what the song is. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome app. On the subject, the Peaky Blinders intro song is really good. Yeah, it is. Oh, just Peaky Blinders, I love it. Eating my beans with a green rat. Hand. Super Trousers asks. What other comedians should get shredded and star in Marvel movies, in your honest opinions? Kevin Hart. Uh, Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> no, because he's going to be Black Adam. He doesn't count, and he's already fucking shredded. <laughs> that was the joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Rock. Yeah. He, of course, is Marty, but that's not really enough. That's not anything to do with Marvel. Who's going to... Come with me when the new Madagascar movie comes out, or I'm gonna have to see it by myself. I already said. Are you gonna watch the the um the kids show Madagascar of all the characters as like as babies? Yeah. Um, depends. No, that sounds terrible. No, if it's Chris Rock and uh, returning, if all the main voice actors return, yeah. if it's people not, if it's not the official actors, you can count me out. Mm. The official actors aren't going to return for one Nickelodeon kids show. You'd be surprised, dude. Like, they were in all of those weird, like, the Madagascar Valentine's special and the Halloween one. So they were all in that shit, so. Damn. Um, other Damn. comedians, though. Uh, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's... What could he be? <laughs> what uh, the fuck character could he play? Just take out Chris Pratt and put in Ricky Gervais. <laughs> uh, ripped... Ricky Gervais as Star Lord, <laughs> dude. <laughs> um, comedians. Oh, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer. The Eternals too. She'll probably be in that. But then, what what jokes would be she be able to make if she like becomes like a perfect ripped model for a movie? That's All it. of her humor will be about that, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Marvel humor is that though. Wow, you're kind of ripped. Yeah, well. Hey, I so haven't you. told you this before, but I like you. Wow, mate, thanks for make, making me hate Marvel again. Don't <laughs> Zingo. With that, that's all the questions we'll do I for I never this finished episode. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's how boring it was. <sighs> Why'd you have to do that? <sighs> Why'd you have to do that right at the end? I'm making it full circle, bitch. Batch. Well, that's episode 199C of the Jarcast. Uh, closing off the trilogy. Who knows what's coming next? It's not going to be 199D, so don't worry about it. Yeah, we're not that oh, fucking wait, no, funny. It could be 199D's nuts. Ooh. So that's a potentiality too. These so. nuts. These nuts. Tasting through our nuts. These nuts. I'm just going to yeah. quickly shout out Sweet Potato Fries for being 
mediocre. Mediocre. We'll see you next episode. Thanks for the support. <laughs> Rate us five to star on iTunes. Bitch.